I've gone ahead and added on one side the two and two chain just so that you can see what it's going to look like. Now I've also got all of the next section prepared here which you can see and this is what we're going to use to make these links here. So I'm going to go back to the side where we had the sort of handle and we're going to remove that handle now and you can undo it or you can simply snip it. Now if you remember we started with a 4mm jump ring so when I did this side I went straight into I closed that final link with a 4mm jump ring just so it would mirror in. So this is a single one and we're going to go into a two and two so I'm going to need to add another one. So let me just explain my sections that I have down here prepared for you. I have 11 four mil jump rings already opened and then I have 10 because I need that extra one to go and on the end just here. So I have 10 sections of a single loop with two attached. Again, this is just going to make life a little bit quicker and easier. Just remember to make sure that these are all closed properly. So I have 10 of these sections and I have 11 of the opened 4mm and all of these jump rings are 4mm. I then have opened two I then have opened two 3mm jump rings because we're going to use those to add the clasp at the very end. Taking your section, I'm going to pick up one of my 4mm jump rings. So basically they're all going to be 4mm until the very end. So I'm just going to refer to them as a jump ring. And I'm going to pop that straight through those final two links just there. Using my pliers, just going to close this back up and then I have two four mil jump rings and then going to pick up one of my sections drop that straight through both of those and close you'll see the pattern it's very familiar pretty much what we've been doing all the way along but without adding the gemstones so then pick up a single jump ring and we want to pop it through the two sets of two so you've got if we open this link here if I just show you it here we've got two a single and two where that single one is where that single one is where that single one is we're going to feed another jump ring through so taking that jump ring popping it in and then all the way around and just catch those two so you'll see all of the jump rings are now on this single one come in and close really make sure that that join is closed and when you drop this down we should have two two and two I'm going to repeat this pattern so I'm now going to take another one of my preloaded sections pop that through these two jump rings here close this and then take the single jump ring and complete that section by feeding it through and catching all of those jump rings to make it a two and two so again I'll just show you, you just pop one of your complete units through the two jump rings and close. Take one of your open ones and pop that again through the same two sets of jump rings to close it. And 
there you have your two and two weave now obviously you could make this a one and two if you wanted to you do whatever you want I just thought it was a nice balance it kind of graduated down the design of the necklace where we've obviously gone from having this chunky weave just here to the more spaced out links here and then this two and two here so we're going to go ahead and I'll just add the rest of the jump rings now I've gone ahead and added all of those jump rings on but one thing I wanted to point out is I want you to just check when you're doing your two and two although it's a very simple easy weave something can happen and I want to show you so you can sometimes if you're not careful you can inadvertently create almost a little mini Mobius so a Mobius is when your jump rings kind of go into a swirl I hope you can see it okay but these two jump rings just here are swirling so they're not sitting next to each other like say these ones they've locked so just go and check them to make sure that that hasn't happened and it's easy enough to fix just take that jump ring whichever one's easiest for you to sort of grab just open it back out remove it now nothing's going to happen because you've still got a jump ring in the middle so it's not going to fall apart you can then just reposition it making sure to not go through any jump rings close that back up and there you've got your completed link so just remember to check all of your links and make sure that that hasn't happened on both sides and also to go over them and see if you catch any that might not be closed properly such as this little fella here I'm just going to go in so just make sure you take that time to check all of your work before we finish it off and then the final touch is I'm going to take one of my 3 mil jump rings pop it through those final two 4 mils, and pop on my clasp and I'm using a toggle clasp here so I just think it gives a nice finish close that up turn the piece around and repeat on the opposite side and again I'm just using the three mil so I just feel it tapers down the size of the design nicely pop on the other part of your toggle close there we go so you can see the finish that we've got there I've just used a rose gold um, toggle clasp there but you can use one that's going to tone in with your jump rings I actually quite like that contrast so you can see there that that's graduated down and then we've got that fluidity and it gradually goes into the separated captured bead links and all the way down and then we've got a double jump ring just there that shows the continuous part of the links where they're all continuously linked in and then again if we go to here we'll see in a moment you'll come across the double jump rings again that will dis mark the distinction there they are then we're back into those links and then we're back into the two and two tapering down to that clasp there you have your finished necklace and as you can see it's all ready to go easy to wear easy to pop on it's got a lovely weight and fluidity to it so that's how you do the necklace 